Union, a women's British and Irish Lions tour, appears to be a step closer after positive findings in a recent feasibility study. The British and Irish Lions and the Four Nations Unions are now working together to see if they can agree on a number of considerations, including the potential structure and timing of a tour. We'll keep you up to date on that and all the rest of the sport. I'm back at about 20 past one, but that's it for now. Hayley, thank you. You're listening to Lunchtime Live with Hayley Miller and Barry Stewart. Coming up in the programme, we're going to be talking more about the government's uh, deposit return scheme for recycling bottles and cans because the deadline for that, for businesses to sign up to it, is at midnight tonight. But now the time is half past twelve. On digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and online, BBC Radio Scotland. Well, it's time for news and sport for the borders with David Knox. Good afternoon. Schools across the borders are closed today for the fifth teacher's strike so far over pay. The national industrial action goes ahead despite further negotiations and an improved offer over the weekend. Scottish Borders Council has already confirmed all schools in the area, both primaries and secondaries, will be shut, although early learning centres and childcare facilities will stay open. Bonchester Bridge Care Centre has been given until next week to make improvements after inspectors found a catalogue of failings. Staff at the home were mostly untrained and unsupervised. Residents were bored and the building found to be unsafe during January's three-day inspection. Graham McGregor has the details. Three inspectors from the government's care watchdog spent three days at Bonchester Bridge Care Centre outside Hoyk. They identified significant weaknesses across all quality indicators. The inspectors highlighted that the 24 residents were not given regular baths or showers. They didn't always receive their prescribed medication and that health concerns weren't always followed up. The care inspectorate officers also found that few activities took place at the home, which is owned by St. Philip's Care Limited, with residents complaining that they were bored and had nothing to do. And the inspection report, which grades every indicator as weak, found the country house was in urgent need of refurbishment and that exposed hot pipes at waste and ground levels posed a significant risk. Further concerns were raised about management, staff development and care plans. A lengthy list of requirements has been issued ahead of a follow-up inspection on March the 10th. Border Services Housing Support Service for People with Autism has received a positive report from inspectors. The scheme, run by Autism Initiatives UK for more than a decade, provides help and care to five tenants and two staffed houses near St Boswell's, as well as a community outreach. The care inspectorate rated them good in supporting well-being, the quality of leadership, the staff team and on how well care is supported and planned. But improvements were needed to the management and auditing of people's medication. A Peebleshire path has reopened after being temporarily closed because of erosion, despite being only three years old. The council now plan a full appraisal ahead of any permanent fix to the multi-use path at Bishop's Point. Debbie Muir reports. The inner Leithen to Walkerburn extension path only opened three years ago at a cost of around half a million pounds. The trail was the latest section of a multi-use path which will soon go all the way above Peebles to Eddleston. But recent floods over the winter eroded a section of banks between the Tweed and the path near to Walkerburn, forcing Scottish Borders Council to take action last week to prevent further damage. The local authority has confirmed that £20,000 has been spent on placing giant sandbags between the river and the path, with the work only being completed at the weekend. They say that an appraisal of options and discussions with river authorities will need to take place before a permanent solution can be found. The multi-use path is fully open once more. People's Common Good Committee will this evening consider whether to fund improvements to make two local parks more family friendly. The Callants Club has applied for a grant to buy four picnic tables and upgrade benches in Haylodge Park and to put two more tables beside the new play park at Victoria Park. It would cost, it would cost, would be close to £3,000, but the club would build the benches and tables themselves. Walkerburn needs a new football pitch. Its current ground is to be turned into a multi-use pump track. The Village's Community Development Trust has been granted permission for the circuit, suitable for wheelchair users, adapted wheel bikes, BMX, mountain bikes and skateboards. But a replacement pitch will have to be found as part of the plan. 
Staying with football, Gallifrey Fairdean Rovers, Danny Braith has signed a new contract to keep him at Netherdale until the summer of 2024. The former Hibs and Manchester United midfielder ended speculation after a number of lucrative offers, including one from fellow Borders Lowland League club Berwick Rangers. Now, Gala are free this weekend, but Danny is expected to return from injury the following Saturday against Cowdenbeath. Turning to athletics, and there was joy for Borders runners at the National Cross Country Championships. Scout Adkin from Peebles won the Open Women's Race, with Sarah Green from Gala not only finishing fourth overall, but also claiming the over 40s title. Zoe Flug from Midlam came home in fifth place. Kelso's Daryl Hasty claimed the men's over 40s title, and former TV Dale Harrier Conan Harper was third in the under 20s men's race. And finally, in racing, Lily's Leaf trainer Jackie Stephen saddled Joanna I'm Free to win the three mile handicap hurdle race at air yesterday. And Hoyt jockey Bruce Lynn rode for Tescue Wood to a comfortable seven length win in the two mile novice hurdle race. Well done to both of them. Now for the border's weather, here's Christine MacDonald. Largely cloudy this afternoon with the odd spot of rain at times. There will be occasional breaks, allowing brighter interludes. Highs of 6 to 9 Celsius with a light north to northeasterly wind. Tonight will bring more of the same. A lot of cloud breaking from time to time to give clearer spells. Lows tonight of 3 Celsius. Tomorrow high pressure will remain in command, maintaining settled conditions. A lot of cloud with occasional brightness. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. Get the latest news on your smart speaker whenever you want. Just say, play BBC News for Scotland. Now, the deadline for businesses to sign up to the Scottish Government's deposit return scheme for recycling bottles and cans is midnight tonight. The Circular Economy Minister, Lorna Sleep,